Alright, game review. Today we are reviewing an absolute banger of a game by Comp Free Interactive. Be wide or die. The game opens up with your flatmate Frankie speaking to Keith on the phone and telling you that you have to cover the evening shift because Michelle hasn't turned up for work. I have to say this, it is an absolute fresh breath of bloody air to finally be playing a survival horror game that is strictly based in the UK, which is where I'm from. The accuracy here is excellent. Walk down most streets in the UK and this is what houses will look like. The only thing that stands out is the police cars, which are Ameri American, and the taxis, which are only yellow. While on your way to work, you encounter a dog down an alley and this creepy homeless man who tells you this is your last day among the living. Once you arrive at the video store and drop off your bag in the locker, a customer gives you a bunch of shit for having to wait for only 10 minutes. Are you bloody kidding me? If you were waiting for 10 minutes in a video store or any kind of store, wouldn't this be an opportune moment to look around in case you wanted anything else? I mean, there's VHSs all over the place. Some of the customers are cool though, like this one guy who's a movie buff and gives you a Michael Myers reference about the mask being based off William Shatner's face. The Video To Go store also has a mascot. Oh, <laughs> look at the little VHS. Kind of cute, honestly. Eventually, some time passes and it goes to 9 o'clock and we receive an email on the computer of the stuff we have to do before we leave. Lock the door, pick up the rubbish, find an unflushed turd in the toilet, find out a bunch of more movie references like E.T. the extra test. <laughs> Once you've done that, some creepy guy in a pig mask starts tapping on the window, but you tell him to go away, but then he throws a brick through the window and you're forced to call Keith your boss before you have the chance to leave. Keith tells you to board up the window, which you do, and then he says he'll be there soon, but the power is cut off and you're forced to crawl into one of the vents. Remember that homeless man who said it could be your last day among the living? Well, you find him cut up to pieces, and then... Do you remember the last time you played a horror game where the chase music sounded that good? Because I don't. Anyway, you temporarily lose Slaw, but then you fall down and bang your head on a nearby pipe, and Slaw catches up with you, because of course he does. He knocks you out and you wake up in one of his cells. Slaw's smart enough to kill three people in one week and not get caught, but he's not smart enough to make a cell secure. There's literally a massive hole in this cell. Is the guy stupid? Come on! Make it hard at least! Remember what I said earlier about the killer being stupid? Well, that's not really true. Walk all over this abandoned place. Every single window has bars on it. So yeah, this guy's smart enough to do that. This just tells you, you're stuck here, you ain't getting out pal, you are dead. One thing I'll give the developer massive credit for is that you can free roam here. None of that Resident Evil remake stuff where you're constantly being stalked by the enemy. You can free roam here, do what you like, you can even do some puzzles and find a key inside a severed head. Very close to the end of the game, you can find a door code for one of the lofts where you'll find a handgun. But here's the thing, the gun would not fire. The firing button is RT and I checked this out to make sure I wasn't doing anything wrong. But the gun would not fire. It got to the point where I was using random combinations of buttons to hope that something would happen. But no, the gun would not fire. So I quit the game and changed the shooting control to left trigger, hoping that this would work. And does it work? I didn't want to have to do this, especially because I was at the end of the game and I was almost finished with it. But whatever, at least it worked. So you'll shoot this guy a bunch of times, running round in squares, and he takes way more bullets than necessary. Once Slaw finally goes down, you use a circuit breaker and put it on the machine, and then you turn the machine on and a security card comes out. You use the security card to open the main doors and escape. So he's dead, right? No. He bumps into you again, and you stab him in the chest with a crowbar and throw that evil son of a bitch right into the grinder. Gets a right taste of his own medicine too. 
This is a great game and I think it's unique because you do have the freedom to explore without worrying about a killer constantly stalking you. I'm going to give this an 8 out of 10.